Welcome back to the series of lectures on Western Civilization, Part 1. Uh, last time we met, we talked about Columbus's pitch, uh, those things that Columbus presented to the king and queen of Spain uh, to uh, persuade them to back and help finance his trip. So today what I want to do in this lecture is talk about those maps that Columbus used as he uh, made his plans to go back to China. Now, um, this lecture should help you uh, empathize with Columbus. You're, you're going you're gonna to get a chance to see the world the way he saw it and the way he believed it was constructed. Uh, he's quite wrong, uh, almost absurdly wrong, but nevertheless, this will give you some insight into um, uh, Columbus's world. <clears throat> now, the first map, and we have links for all these maps for you to take a look at, so you can examine them yourself, uh, probably on D2L. Uh, the first map is uh, Ptolemy's world map. Now, this was constructed in the, uh, in the first century, I think around 75 of the Common Era, 79 maybe. Uh, so this is a map that was um, uh, built by Ptolemy at the height of the Roman Empire. Ptolemy is a Roman citizen. Uh, he lives in Egypt. Uh, this map was considered authoritative. It had re-emerged in the Middle Ages. Uh, we know that Columbus took a look at it. And you can look at this map and let your eyes get oriented to it. And you'll notice a few things um, that are glaring. Uh, the Western Hemisphere is not depicted. The uh, Southern Hemisphere, for the most part, is not depicted. You'll also notice that the largest geographic feature on this planet, the uh, Pacific Ocean, is not shown on Ptolemy's map. The three continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe, are depicted. You'll notice that Ptolemy, uh, again, an Egyptian citizen, you'll notice that he, uh, his uh, uh, depiction of the Mediterranean area is reasonably accurate. Uh, you can see the, the coast of North Africa. Uh, you can see the Straits of Gibraltar leading into the Atlantic. You can see Western Europe. You see Italy, Greece, uh, the Black Sea, and Turkey. Uh, you see the Caspian Sea, oriented here, uh, more or less east to west, when of course it, in reality it's oriented north to south. You see the Persian Gulf and the Arabia. So as long as we stay in the Mediterranean area, in Southwest Asia, North Africa, uh, this map is reasonably accurate. Now once we move out of that region, uh, the map becomes guesswork. You'll notice Africa is extended all the way across the southern border of the map, extended all the way to Asia, in fact, uh, essentially turning uh, the Indian Ocean into a giant inland sea. Uh, Ptolemy did this for the simple reason that no one knew how far south Africa extended. So as a cartographer, he uh, made a virtue of this ignorance by providing uh, a decorative border, essentially, uh, using Africa uh, to extend all the way east and to connect up with Asia. So, if you look at this map and you realize that, uh, as Columbus did, if you look at Spain, you see there's a very narrow ocean just to the left of Spain, just to the west of Spain. And Columbus believes that he can cross that narrow ocean quickly and safely and make his way to China. Again, there are no, uh, there are no great impediments, no Western Hemisphere, no Pacific Ocean. Now, this next map is what is called a T-O map, and it's called that by the, the, the shape, and you can see it here uh, in the illustration. The O is the encircling ocean of the Earth. Uh, the T are the internal waterways, uh, the Mediterranean, uh, the Nile, and the Don Rivers, separating uh, Africa and then separating Europe from Asia. Now, you'll notice on this map that Asia is given the dominant position at the top, and then you see Europa and Africa uh, to the southwest and to the southeast. This map tells Columbus the same thing that Ptolemy's map told him. Uh, there's a narrow encircling ocean of the earth, and there are only three continents. Now, this TO map is a church map. It is not an attempt to depict geography in any accurate way. It is an attempt to place Christianity um, or to place geography in the context of Christianity. It's probably a better way to put it. Uh, and if you'll notice something else about this map, you can see that um, it is derived from Genesis. Uh, Asia, Europa, and Africa are 
all apportioned to Noah's sons. You see Shem at the top in Asia, Japheth in Europa, and Ham uh, in Africa. You can see this in Genesis uh, in the flood stories. Uh, quite often in a TO map like this, you will see at the very center uh, uh, where the T crosses, uh, you'll see uh, a city. Uh, it's called the Navel of the Earth, uh, Jerusalem. This, of course, is the holiest place in Christendom. So the TO map, although it is a clerical map, uh, tells Columbus exactly the same thing that the secular map by Ptolemy told him, that the earth is quite small and that a narrow ocean uh, surrounding the landmass uh, could be crossed quickly, safely. Now this next map, the Tuscanelli chart, this is very interesting. Uh, Tuscanelli was an Italian nobleman and he and Columbus uh, exchanged this map and made comments about it. This particular version shows you a superimposition of the Western Hemisphere. So you can see uh, reality instead of uh, the fantasy that Columbus and Tuscanelli are engaged in. If you'll notice here, you can see that Columbus leaves Spain and the Tuscanelli chart or map is that portion in the peach or brown color. You can see that Columbus leaves Spain, goes to the Canaries, uh, refuels, picks up supplies, and then he picks up the westerlies and shoots across that narrow encircling ocean. Uh, you see the large series of small islands. Uh, Columbus arrives here and he knows perfectly well where he is. Um, his information has already told him that the Indies are a large group of islands on the other side of the world. And what he's done here is reach the Bahamas, but he believes uh, that he's reached the Indies. So quite naturally, he rounds up these naked natives and he refers to them as Indians, believing that he had reached the Indies. Now, he leaves uh, one of these small islands and moves southwest. You see the large island here on the Tuscanelli chart. And he attempts to circumnavigate this island. And he knows exactly where he is. Uh, Marco Polo had talked about Sapango, uh, which is uh, the name given then for the island of Japan, and uh, described it as a long, narrow island uh, to the east of China. So to, uh, Columbus is attempting to circumnavigate this long, narrow island. He finally gives up and retraces his steps. But again, he realizes that he's reached Sapango, or Japan. Therefore, China must lie just over the western horizon. Now, we know today uh, that Columbus was nowhere near Japan. He was actually uh, circumnavigating the island of Cuba. So you can look at this chart and see uh, just how confused Columbus is, but also how certain he is uh, that he knows exactly where he is geographically. Again, uh, Polo's description of these things, uh, combined with uh, other sources, have convinced him that he's quite right. And of course, Columbus will go to his grave, uh, certain that he uh, had, had come close to the Asian continent. He never dreamed that he had found a new world. Now, this is the Martellus map. This is published in 1490, so this is only two years before Columbus sails, and you can see that it's consistent with the other maps in that it has no western hemisphere, it has no Pacific Ocean, uh, the southern hemisphere is also diminished, but you'll notice something that has changed, an improvement. Uh, look at the southern tip of Africa. For the first time we see the Cape of Good Hope. I believe the Portuguese explorer Diaz crossed the Cape of Good Hope in 1488, if my memory serves me correctly. So this information has made its way back to the cartographer, uh, Martellus, and he's included it. He's included it on his new map of the world. Um, besides the inclusion of the Cape of Good Hope, though, this map tells Columbus uh, what he already knows. Three, uh, three continents and a narrow ocean surrounding those continents. Now, this last map Columbus never saw. This map's published about the time of Columbus's death, I believe 1507. This is Martin Walsemuller's map, and you'll notice it is dramatically different from the other maps we've examined. Uh, there is a Western Hemisphere here. There's a, a Pacific Ocean. You see more of the Southern Hemisphere. 
And you can see uh, Volsi Mueller's map has a nice depiction of the Cape of Good Hope, the southern tip of Africa. But again, like the other maps, as you go further east into Asia, you can see that Volsi Mueller is also uh, using a lot of guesswork when it comes to the Far East. You'll notice there are two men at the top of this map, one gazing uh, westward towards the New World and the other uh, gazing eastward toward the Old World. Uh, to the left is Ptolemy, looking back at the world that he had mapped. Uh, to the right is uh, another Italian explorer, Amerigo Vespucci, and he's looking westward at the New World that he recognized. Uh, legend has it that uh, Vespucci had sailed down the Atlantic coast of Brazil. Uh, this is in the decade after Columbus. And on this voyage, he encountered something so astounding that he had an epiphany and he realized that uh, this was no island like Columbus had claimed, that this instead was a new continent. What he encountered, of course, is the Amazon River, the mouth of the Amazon. And he knew immediately that a river of this size uh, could not be born of an island, that it had to, uh, its source had to be a continent. Uh, Vespucci's notes and information made, its, made their way back to Europe uh, to Martin Volsimuller, the cartographer. So when he published this map in 1507, uh, he gave credit to uh, Amerigo Vespucci and uh, printed Amerigo across the Western Hemisphere. Uh, that name has obviously been feminized uh, to America, uh, but at any rate, the significance of these maps I think is plain. Uh, these maps convince Columbus that he can sail quickly and safely from Spain westward across a narrow encircling ocean and arrive in the Far East, in China. Uh, without the Western Hemisphere, without the Pacific Ocean, uh, Columbus's uh, rather outrageous, outrageous uh, idea now seems perfectly plausible. So I hope this gives you a sense of the world as Columbus saw it and uh, you can see that it's much smaller, probably half the size of the Earth, missing uh, these key geographic features. Thank you very much.